The second annual progress report on Madison Metropolitan School District Superintendent Jen Cheatham's strategic plan is out. And she's here to talk about both the progress achieved and needed this morning on For the Record. Good morning, I'm Neil Heinen. The vision remains unchanged. Every Madison school will be a thriving school that prepares every child for college, career, and community. So how are we doing? I welcome back to For the Record, Madison School Superintendent Jen Cheatham. Hi, Neil. Hello, Jen. It's good to see you. So how are we doing? We're doing well. We're uh, two years into implementation of our strategic framework, and we're making good strides. We have a lot more work to do. Yep. Um, never satisfied, right. but making progress. I mean, you made it clear from the beginning this was not going to be a quick fix. This was not going to be a one or two year That's right. It's fix. a journey. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So in that context, though, give us some highlights to this plan. Um, I think I would start, I, mean, I think you know, Neil, from our previous discussions that we are obsessed with excellent implementation. Right. Um, lots of school districts fall down or um, lose course because they haven't focused on high quality implementation. So when something doesn't work immediately, they give up, shift to another strategy, and it's crazy making. And that's what the strategic is. framework is. It's a comprehensive implementation plan. That's right. Yeah. So we have continued to charge ahead on high quality implementation, school improvement planning, which as you know is about um, instituting a more disciplined way of working in our schools aimed at raising Every school, achievement. school by school. That's right. And every school improvement plan unique to that particular school setting. Um, we have continued to work on developing our educators capacity to teach all children well through a much more deep, focused, comprehensive approach to professional development yep. um, and anchored to a clear common definition of great teaching in our district, which didn't exist before. Um, and we've been following through on the work of our central office priorities, which are all aimed at um, providing better tools and resources for our schools, um, more consistent, high quality tools and resources, but more importantly, breaking down what we see as institutional barriers um, to student success. So for example, uh, the creation of curriculum and assessment tools K-12 in literacy in both English and Spanish for the first time in our school district. Um, the creation of a brand new teacher screening and selection process so we're hiring the best and the brightest. Um, uh, we instituted a principal screening and selection process, as you'll remember, last mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the implementation of a new approach to behavior management mm -hmm. that is focused on um, restorative practices as opposed to purely punitive practices. So good examples of how our central office is, um, is uh, providing a, a better set of tools and resources for our schools to do their best work. Yeah, I mean, so there are action steps in every one of those areas. There's a lot happening. Right, right, and some of it <laughs> yeah. is measured in, in, in the annual report. Yeah, so implementation, moving ahead, um, and I think you'll see that we're not changing course dramatically. Um, we're going to continue to go deeper into uh, those same implementation steps in the upcoming year, which is something we're hearing from our teachers, something that they need. Mm -hmm. um, they need time to do things well, um, and, uh, and we're, we're respecting that, um, that request. Um, we think it's the right thing to do. And we would not We would be changing course if our outcomes weren't looking pretty positive. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what I'm, uh, the, the measurements that we have here will help you focus on where, on where we go next. That's right. So our, our, the annual report not only highlights what we've done in terms of implementation, but also outcomes, um, and I'll highlight a few of those. I mean, yep. it's, it's not perfect, right? right? There are places we need to um, focus our energy but on the positive side, we've seen um, excellent progress at the elementary level. Mm -hmm. Literacy and math over two years' time, up 10% at fifth grade. I mean, this is um, above average when yeah. it comes to school district performance. We should be very proud of the progress that's happening. And that's really across student groups um, for the most part, which is uh, really incredible and, um, and promising. Um, at the, uh, so what are the factors that... that 
are at play here with that? I think it has a lot to do with a more coherent approach to curriculum and instruction, okay. particularly at elementary school. Um, as I mentioned before, we've invested over the last couple of years in stronger instructional tools and resources so that teachers aren't having to um, define what good instruction looks like from classroom to classroom, school to school, but that we have a more consistent um, approach to great teaching for every child. Um, and we've actually invested over this past year in teacher teaming. So in our first year of implementation, we focused a lot on leadership, the development of a strong leadership team that develops a school improvement plan, monitors it, makes adjustments along the way. That disciplined way of working among the leadership group was of critical importance in our first year. Okay. Um, in our second year, this past year, we extended that way of working to teacher teams. So how do uh, all of the first grade teachers in a school work together collaboratively to know their students well, plan their instruction, um, assess the extent to which that instruction is meeting the needs of children and make adjustments along the way. So that same disciplined way of working we've embedded um, uh, at, the, at the teacher team level. Just at the elementary level, Jen, or across all schools? Actually across all schools, but I think it's taken hold faster at the elementary level. Why? Um, I just think it was a way of working that was already occurring in some schools, um, so easier to tighten up those practices. It's a little simpler in some ways. When you get to middle and high school, you have not only grade level teams, but you have course alike teams, right? right? Makes History, sense. Right there. Um, it, it becomes more complicated. At, at elementary level, at elementary, it's um, a little more simple and elegant, <laughs> which always helps. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think, and they've just had uh, a little more experience in, in working in this way, and it's taking hold. I yeah. think as we see those practices take hold in middle school and high school in the coming years, we're going to start to see the same kinds of positive results at middle and high school. I have no doubt about it. One of the things I really find helpful is um, you identify a couple of schools in the report that have shown really uh, extraordinary progress yeah. or are really good examples of that kind of work. Yeah. Orchard, no, which was, um, uh, El Elvium. Elvium was one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could have highlighted quite a few schools, right. as you know. Right. But uh, we like um, every year getting a chance to shine a, a spotlight on a couple of schools that are showing what accelerated results look like and, um, and how they're getting them. So Elvium is a great example. We had a new principal started Elvium this past year. Um, she's wonderful, um, deep background in literacy, which I think really helped the school align its instructional practices. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and they've done a lot with teacher teaming this past yeah. year. In fact, at our press conference on the annual report was at LVM right. a week or so ago. Um, it just so happened that the first grade team was sitting in the library planning their curriculum for the upcoming working, year, what, yeah, working yeah. during the press conference. Great example. It was hysterical, but yeah, great example. This is a, a great example of the kind of um, disciplined, collaborative practice we want to see happening at every school. Well, when we come back, I want to highlight a couple more successes and we'll look at some challenges okay. right after this. I'm back with Madison School Superintendent Jen Cheatham, and we are talking about the 2014-15 annual report on the MMSD strategic framework. Uh, we talked about we, uh, elementary school, and in terms of success, um, graduation rates is another thing that popped, Jen, talking yeah, about those. Yeah, so graduation rates, I want to be clear, have a one-year lag. So this is representing really the first year of implementation of our strategic framework. Um, progress on grad rate, we're really excited about it. Um, but we've seen some accelerated results on grad rate in a couple of our um, high schools, which we think are really promising. Um, La Follette High School, for example, had 75% of their African American students graduate um, last year, which is um, pretty phenomenal, mm -hmm. given that the district average is 56%. Mm -hmm. This is about a 10 percentage point jump for La Follette. Memorial, very similar. 
up to 68% graduating for African American kids, but that's, I think, an 11% jump for them in one year. And this is the kind of progress we need to see when it comes to graduation rates. And again, do you know what's working, Jen? Why is that happening? You know, I, I, I know I'm constantly talking about this disciplined way of working. It's, yeah. a, it's really about knowing every child. Our high schools are getting better and better at um, beginning in ninth grade, knowing every child, knowing exactly when a child is falling off track, um, and intervening quickly to get them back on track. I know in our first year, we wanted to make sure that every high school knew every single 12th grader that was credit deficient, how credit deficient were they, what, we, what are we gonna do to get this child across the finish line. Um, and I think it's starting to pay off. And it's just a change, right? I mean, teachers in the past would have had a different view of the class and of the students and of what you do in certain situations than they do now. And that change is what's making a difference. I think so. And you know, it's, it's hard to point at any one factor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the work that we've been doing with Abbott Tops mm -hmm. and the Boys and Girls Club right? for years now. I definitely think that is one of the major ingredients to our success when gotcha. it comes to graduation rate. But that too is about having higher expectations for kids, providing them the support that they need to get there, knowing children, individual children really well, right. and helping them create their own pathway to graduation and to post-secondary. Right. Um, so you'll see us, um, we can talk about this a little more later, really focusing in on getting ninth graders on track from the get-go. And I think as we get more and more ninth graders on track, we're gonna see those graduation rates really start to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important, we need every kid graduating. Now, how do you connect ACT scores to that? Because that popped in here too. Yeah, ACT is um, is really interesting. We, um, of course, want all of our students taking the ACT because it is the uh, assessment or one of the assessments that's used uh, for admittance into um, into college. And we saw big jumps in ACT participation this past year. We've mm -hmm. been seeing jumps over the last several years, but in particular this last year. Um, which was great. We want to see all children taking the ACT because we want all children to have um, options upon graduation. If you aren't even taking the ACT exam, what are the chances that you're going to get into college? Right. Not that that's the only option. We want children to really um, think with their families, with their teachers, with more intentionality about what the right post-secondary option is for them. It may not be a four-year college, but options are very important. Mm -hmm. And and uh, um, well, that, that's, this just sticks in my head because it's the whole college career and community. Yeah. And you know we say that, but I think it's worth reminding people that career is one, and that community is there's a citizenship component to this. That's right. And it doesn't necessarily speak to the ACT, but there's no reason why you can't take the ACT, get your results, and still decide that a career option is better for you than college. That's right. And that this preparation for community and citizenship still is an, is an underlying theme here. Yeah, going into next year, um, one of the things that we'll be focusing on is ninth grade, and we're introducing the idea of um, something that's called the academic career plan. So every ninth grader, um, and this will follow them through their high school experience, will have an academic career plan that they help create over the course of their ninth grade year that helps them set goals, um, for not just what they're going to take in terms of coursework in high school, but what their post-secondary plans are and what their possible career options might be. Right. Knowing you know, full well that ninth graders don't necessarily know what they want to do sure. with the rest of your life. That's okay, but we want them to start, be, start to think about it right. and to become more knowledgeable about what the career options are, what they are in Dane County. Um, I, again, it really gets back to this intentionality um, and uh, yeah, it's, we're, we're pretty excited about it. So talk about middle school, the, the, the last of the three. Yeah, so um, middle school, this actually gets to uh, one of the challenge areas. I mean, we're, we're very excited about what we're seeing at middle school in terms of implementation of uh, these new instructional practices that we're working on. Um, but we think that middle school is experiencing what we sometimes call in education an implementation dip. Um, so the results in middle school were essentially flat this year. We saw a nice jump last year, flat this year. But we think that that's a, um, a symptom of, of uh, our middle schools just really digging into some 
pretty serious change in practice. And it takes a while before those new changes begin to take hold. Mm -hmm. um, so in the upcoming year, we're going to really be wrapping our arms around middle school, supporting them and making sure that their professional development plans are strong. Um, we've realized that we have a gap in instructional materials for literacy at middle school that we need to address. Um, so I think as a community, I'm really hoping uh, that we can better align efforts in a few places. Middle school will be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so if I understand this right, then we shouldn't be disappointed necessarily if elementary school flattens out a little bit next year after big increases this year, ah. if we see high school progress. I mean, I'm just kind of making this up. but. I'm glad that you mentioned that because I think uh, I don't want anyone to think that improvement in education is just a trajectory that goes straight up. <laughs> right. It just does not work like that. I'm not sure that it works like that in, in any kind of um, organization or business even. Um, it is, uh, it is, you know, like we said, it's a journey. I right. mean, you make, you make strides, you level off for a little while while new practices are taking hold. Those new practices take hold and you take off in terms of results again. Um, it's probably going to go a little more like this. And, um, and what I keep telling people is expect progress from us. Don't expect miracles. Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, change is difficult. Right. Um, and our educators are committed to making those changes. But it, it, it does take time. When we come back, among other things, I want to talk about what the community can do and some action plan steps going forward with Superintendent Jen Cheatham right after this. Madison School Superintendent Jen Cheatham and I are talking about the annual report on the uh, strategic framework, the uh, master plan, the vision for Madison Public Schools, which is in its second year of implementation. Now, oh, it's entering its third year, and this is the second year report. Um, you mentioned something that, I, again, in the paper that we've talked about many times. I mean, you mentioned it a lot, but I still think it is so startling for people to hear the percentage of students that are Engli English language learners. But mm -hmm. it also shows up in some of the measurements here. Jen, talk about that. Yeah, we have a growing population of English language learners. At this point, one out of three of our students um, is, is an English language learner. And um, we think that's it's actually quite wonderful. It says something about the diversity of our community. Um, but it also is a challenge. We're having to learn how to work um, in new ways, we are building new skill sets among our educators to meet the needs of ELLs. Um, if a teacher doesn't have an English language learner in her class today, she's probably going to have one in her class tomorrow. Right. Um, and we need to respond accordingly. The good news is we're actually seeing some positive results for ELLs. This is one of the student groups that pretty much across the board we're seeing positive gains. Um, so we know that some of the new practices that we're working on are beginning to take hold. And in the year ahead, actually in September, we're, we're going to be bringing a comprehensive plan um, for better serving English language learners to our board um, for approval. So uh, we'll be having that discussion very soon, and you'll be hearing more about it. Wouldn't you think this would show up in, 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 in just sort of the, the, the perception of the public schools as a place where, where preparing for global living yeah. is taking place. Well, it's interesting that you say that because the way we're, we are wanting to think and talk and act um, when it comes to the needs of English language learners is really about uh, honoring and respecting that we're all language learners, yeah. right? We're all language learners in an ideal state, ideal state, um, more and more of us, if not all of us, would be bilingual, biliterate, bicultural. I mean, what an amazing skill set yeah. for any child to have. Oh, I wish I wish it for myself Me so too. much. Yeah. Um, I saw uh, uh, one of these rankings uh, a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. that, that had Wisconsin as a state uh, looked at a lot of school measurements. And in terms of school safety, it was like number one oh, yeah. in, in the perception of school safety. And I found that really interesting because it has been a priority of yours. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. We did a, a, a school climate survey for the first time this past spring, and we'll be reporting on that data every year um, through our annual report moving forward. And we also have really high rankings when it comes to 
school safety, the perception of safety in schools, four out of five on a five point scale, which is really positive, especially given that we have been going through this change in terms of our um, approach to responding to student behavior. Um, we've actually reduced the number and percentage of out of school suspensions pretty dramatically, 40, over 40% 40 mm -hmm. reduction mm -hmm. in out of school suspensions, most of those for African American students, um, while keeping our um, our safety numbers really high. So we think that's really important. Across the board, right? I mean, this yeah. was students, staff, and parents? That's right. That, yeah. That's right, across the board. Um, so we're, we're happy about that. Um, we want more of our students, not all of our students, to be in school where they're safe, where they can learn. Um, and when we um, overuse out-of-school suspensions, we're sending a message to children that we don't want them in school, that we don't care about them, they become alienated, um, which isn't what we want for our children. Yeah. We want to set high expectations for them around behavior and give them the skills to meet those high expectations. We have two minutes left. From the beginning, the strategic framework has, has included a community role, yeah. a, a community call to action as it is here. That's right. Tell us what, what's up. Yeah, we can't do it alone. Right. Um, we're getting more and more coordinated. I think, uh, but we need our community to organize itself around our schools. So the three, and three there, items yeah, are up there. That's right, yeah. around youth leadership, mentoring and tutoring, especially for our middle schools um, and those ninth graders that we talked about. And then finally, we wanna do a better job of coordinating services for high needs neighborhood, neighborhoods. And we'll be doing that through an exploration of the community schools model mm -hmm. in the upcoming year. Uh, just briefly, youth leadership, how does that how do you describe that? We learned a lot about the power of youth voice in this past year mm -hmm. um, associated with the death of Tony Robinson mm -hmm. and realized that we have to harness this energy in a way that we haven't in the past. Um, so we're really looking to cultivate youth leadership, youth voice, youth decision making um, as a way to help um, our district move in a positive direction. In partnership with community organizations that are focusing on on that type of leadership development now for young people that's right that's right but driven by young people uh-huh mm -hmm. giving them the voice to do it that's right um and so this is an opportunity jen for businesses community groups neighborhoods to contact the school yeah the schools and say we'd like to play a role in this that's right in our annual report there's a there's contact information there we want to hear from people who want to plug in uh, to these particular areas. Yeah. We already have a lot of people working in this space, but it's about better coordinating them and expanding um, that support um, from a larger group of people. Thanks for coming to do this. Thanks, Neil. We're I gonna, appreciate it. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. My thanks to Superintendent Jen Cheatham and to you for joining us. We'll see you next Sunday on For the Record.